What's up gamers, how the heck are you? Epic Pins here with another Valheim video. In this video, we're gonna be talking about things I wish I just knew sooner that would have made my Valheim experience so much smoother, especially early game. Now these are gonna be tips and tricks for all users, amateurs, and veterans. I hope you guys enjoy, let's get to the video. Number one, hitting multiple resources at once with a single strike does not make it more efficient. It will just end up splitting the damage across both items. So you'll notice that if you strike a single item with a single hit, it does a large amount of damage. If you strike two items with the same type of hit, it will do a reduced damage across both items because it's splitting the damage across each item. Now inherently there is no downside to doing this, it's just simply not more efficient. You end up just splitting the damage across both, so it's usually just better to take on one at a time so that you can focus on what you're doing or use trees and use resources to help you destroy other resources. Usually trees are very large, so as they fall, they can potentially take down multiple trees at once. This is usually the best way to maximize your resource potential and to gather as much material as possible. Number two, understanding food. So food early on in Valheim isn't an enigma. It's pretty basic. You kill an animal, you get the meat from the animal, you cook it, and then you consume that. You can consume up to three items, three separate items for benefits and effects. But the thing is, you may not notice what those items actually do in terms of your health and your stamina. You'll notice when you consume meat, it usually raises your health and raises your stamina slightly. Or if you consume if you consume fruits like berries and blueberries and then you consume vegetables like mushrooms, you'll see that it enhances your stamina more than your health. Each one does a little bit of the other, but one is primarily towards the other. So it's good to have a mix, especially in the beginning of the game because you haven't earned your cook pot yet and things like that. So you can't make things like carrot soup or beef stew or anything like that just yet. So you will be focusing mainly on what you need the most. If you find you're running out of stamina a lot, try to mix in a few fruits and vegetables to get your stamina up a little bit higher. Number three, base location. Now, early on in the game, you're going to probably set up a little mini camp that gets you started and gonna get you to where you can get a few weapons in your belt and kind of build something crazy. But when you start really looking for a base location, my advice is to find a location that's still in the meadows to keep it a little simple on yourself, but close to a black forest. Sometimes you'll find yourself maybe in the middle of the meadows and a little bit of a trek towards the black forest. The reason I say this is, is because it's pretty easy to go from the meadows to the black forest in terms of progression because black forest is where you're gonna start collecting all the stuff to start entering the bronze age. Now, once you've killed the first boss, you're gonna earn yourself the pickaxe and that's gonna allow you to mine for ore, which is what you need to progress through the bronze age. Now, ore is very, very heavy. So in order to move that from the Black Forest to your location can be very time consuming if you did not plan accordingly. Trust me, I've been there. Trekking resources from long distances can be very time consuming and very strenuous to the player, especially if you're playing by yourself. So set yourself up for success by just go ahead and starting your big base build close to that area so that you can already benefit from the resources there. Now granted, there are worse creatures inside the Black Forest, so I would say try to stay away from it if you can slightly, but just be prepared. Set yourself up for success by planning accordingly. Number four, building on a level surface, starting out for the best support possible. Supports in building come in forms of color, so if you look when you're placing a support, blue means a fully supported level. It carries up from green to yellow to red to almost a blood red, which means you cannot place anything any higher. It is not supported. So if you start out at a level surface, then therefore you have a very level playing field in order to start your base building at a perfect, perfect height. So using your hoe to level out an area, making it perfectly flat, using the hoe and your pickaxe, a lot of people don't realize to use your pickaxe as well to dig down deep and to level things out as best you can is very beneficial. So take your time, really get it level, get it flat so that you can start from a good baseline so you can get the most support possible for the building you are creating. Number five is gonna be a tip that I just feel like it, you should take advantage of if, if, if you haven't got to this point yet, you will eventually reach the point where you're going to be raided by various creatures in the game. If that comes and you are not prepared for it, they can potentially destroy your house and things that you have created. So setting yourself up for success is the best plan. Now the game does provide a fence that you can put around your entire base. It does okay, but it is not the greatest. It can be destroyed rather easily by some of the larger creatures in the game. 
Some of the best ways to protect yourself though is actually building a moat. Velheim is unique in this aspect of survival games because you can manipulate the terrain really, really well. So take your pickaxe, dig as far down as you can, and start digging forward in order to make a moat around your entire base. This will cause enemies to fall down into this trap and not be able to get to your base. It's super, super beneficial. It'll allow you to dispose of them very easily. So take advantage of this as you can. You can also do the flip side if you want to build straight up. You can do that as well. You'll just take a little bit of rock in order to build a natural wall. This wall is indestructible and they cannot be destroyed. So this is a great wall. So if you want to build an entire wall around your base, I highly recommend doing that as well. Number six is raids. Now let me tell you, when you kill a boss, when you take down a boss, the creatures from the next boss's area can potentially raid your base. Keep that in mind. So if you take care of, let's say, the first boss, the creatures from the Black Forest will be what raids your base. If you take care of the next boss that's located in the Black Forest, the creatures from the swamp can come and raid your base. Even if you've never visited the swamp before, these creatures can surprise you and come and attack your base, and they'll do it more often than not. So you're gonna to wanna to set yourself up for the potential of a higher level creature coming out of nowhere that you may not be prepared for in order to, to make sure you successfully survive the raid. Number seven is iframes during a dodge roll. Iframes are invincibility frames that happen when you're performing a certain action. So if you're dodge rolling at an enemy or to the side of an enemy, there are moments during the dodge roll where you are completely invincible. The attack will go completely through you and not do any damage whatsoever. So if you know how to time these properly, this can be super beneficial, especially in early combat when a lot of hits can kill you really, really quickly, especially against things like trolls or even like gray dwarf brutes, things like that. You wanna get out of the way as quickly as possible and this can benefit you very, very heavily. Practice the dodge roll, get your timing right on some of the lower level creatures, wait for the attack and dodge roll into it just so you know that this is the time I need in order to not get hit. Number eight, damage number coloring. So knowing what's happening when you see the damage numbers comes up. If you see damage numbers pop up and they are gray, that means the enemy you're attacking is resistant to the item that you're using. If you see the damage number comes up and they're white, that means it's neutral, it has no resistant or no weakness towards that item. If you see the numbers come up as yellow, that means it is weak to whatever attack you're using, whether that be piercing, fire, anything like that, then that is a very good item to use for that certain type of enemy. Moving on to item number nine, knowing that different enemies have weaknesses and learning those weaknesses over time. You can either look up the weaknesses, I'll do a full video on the weaknesses of these creatures as I play throughout the game, but you can also just know that as you're attacking something, if you see it has a yellow number that pops up like we discussed before then you know they are weak to that type and for the last one sometimes upgrading items to the next stage isn't always better so pay attention to the numbers okay so for instance if you are currently running let's say stage three hide armor you've gotten plenty of troll hide and you're running stage three troll hide armor and you want to move on to bronze uh, bronze armor, bronze gear. Well, if you look at the numbers, it's not inherently better to run that because it doesn't benefit you right away. You'll need enough bronze in order to upgrade it a few times before it's actually going to be beneficial to you in the long run. Because right now, it doesn't. It's just gonna be heavier armor that you throw on that is not going to give you any more damage resistant than it currently does. The only thing it does, it could last a little bit longer in a fight if it breaks, but if you don't really have any issues with your armor breaking, like I never really had my armor break before, then it's not going to be a big deal to have those extra defense numbers right away. So pay attention to how much defense it actually covers and make sure that you're upgrading when you actually need to and not just because it's the next item. So make sure you build towards that. All right, guys, that's the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did find any of this useful, any of the tips helpful, please hit that like button below. It does help with the algorithm and I really would appreciate it if you consider subscribing to the channel that would be even better i would love to have you i love survival games i love velheim i'm gonna be covering as much velheim content as i can so i hope you stick around for that and as always guys i will gladly catch you in the next one peace out